No. All right, so let's get to the article uh, that Jeff Risden has. Um, if you want to go through what we'll go through, we'll rifle through it, and then we'll. If you want his opinions, we'll go with his opinions, or we'll go with ours. Uh, Jeff Risden does a damn good job with Lions Wire, but this is what he has. He has something that you said, number four, number five wide receivers. He has interior offensive line depth. He has something I said, edge opposite of Aiden Hutchinson. Uh, he has return specialist, kicker, running back depth, depth, number three tight end, and potentially number four tight end, long snapper, interior D-line depth, and outside def, uh, cornerback depth. Now, what do you want to start with and, and with you? I mean, I, I kind of argue that the number the number two tight end and number three tight end are going to be more important. I mean, I think we need a guy, you know, someone really solid to be able to solidify. I know James Mitchell's kind of in that backup role for right now and Brock, Brock Wright. But, uh, I mean, I think that two and three battle um, to give kind of a break, uh, you know, for Sam Laporta is going to be is more important than three and four. Um, but well, I do agree that it's a position to look at. Well, I look at okay. I look at um, I look at I look at Brock Wright as the number two tight end. I think that he, his ability to um, his ability to block block uh, is crucial. But I, I look at those three and four spot, and I go, okay, who is going to emerge from there? You know, you got uh, you got Shane Joster, who obviously has a connection with uh, Jared Goff, James Mitchell, who we all had hope in. Um, obviously, Sean McCune from Michigan, he's going to be kind of like a depth guy. Parker Hesse from Iowa, who has floated around the NFL for a while. He ain't no Sam Laporta. He's no Brock Wright. We still got Derek Deese or no? Oh, uh, no. No. So these are the tight ends right here. Just Parker I, I mean, I, there, I mean no, no doubter, the top four are the top four. Um, yeah. But uh, I doubt we carry four tight ends into the season. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess with that being said, I guess I do agree on that uh, on that instance because either one of Zilstra or James Mitchell will be off the team most likely. So I, I do see the when I, when I look at it in that term, when I do look at it in that way, it makes more sense. So um, yeah, no, I told I, I I agree with that more now that I think about it. So and that, we, there's something that we looked at. We both looked at four, number four, and number five wide receivers. You brought this up, and I thought this is a good chance to bring it up. So we at the wide receiver position, you got a bunch of guys. I think they will keep I, four guys. I think they'll keep four guys. Bro, I, don't I know. wish Tom Kennedy would go away. <laughs> this, this dude is like on the like fan favorite fandom, like random ass roster bubble. Everyone loves him for three weeks. Goes away, comes back. He's like a he's like a pimple that you can't get rid of, man. Like this guy, like just go away, Tom Kennedy. Five six. It's like if you look at five and okay, I think they're gonna keep five or six wide receivers. So you look at oh, four. You look how many at more four, years we get to see Tom Kennedy? Well, I don't think okay. So we look at this. These four. We look at wide receivers. Who's who's certain to be on the roster? I mean, That's, guaranteed. I'm in same round. Jamison. Amon Rod, Donovan Peoples Jones, Khalif Raymond, J Mo. Guaranteed. Okay, I would go, I would go with something different. I go St. Brown, Khalif Raymond, J Mo, and then the rest is up for debate. Fair enough. Uh, because, I, mean, I, I personally think DPJ has got to be close to a guarantee at this point, but it's close. Well, the only reason I say, okay, so he brings this up in the fourth wide, four, uh, four and five wide receivers. He says, uh, Detroit seems content with their top three sum of three sum of St. Brown, Jamison, and Khalif Raymond because Raymond obviously he has the ability with the punt returns. Uh, there is a school of thought that Raymond might belong in the group and below, but it's clear in many camps and OTAs that the team envisions him and trusts him in the number three wide receiver role until proven uh, otherwise. He brings up uh, the depth wideouts aren't apt to catch a significant amount of passes bar an injury, of course. That means the def- decision on these who earns roles will be made on sub package options and special teams. The later gives Isaiah Williams, who is from Illinois, who had an amazing yak uh, record is undrafted from rookie from Illinois, a legit shot while the former could be an edge for a bigger target, like people's Jones or green, who is hoping to show more in his second season. I think you brought up Antoine green and down to people's Jones. I think if we're going to see anything this year, this is who we got to see. 
We all know what we're going to get out of James and Williams. We know what we're going to get out of St. Brown. We know what we're going to get out of Cleve Freeman. I want to see who emerges from that wide receiver group, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, if I had to guess, I mean, like, I mean, obviously, I think, I mean, what we're most likely keeping five receivers, right? Yeah. Six, I mean, five, six. five to six. So, I mean, and that does give you some room because say you really like a guy like Isaiah Wynn, uh, or did I say that right? Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah. Yeah. Isaiah, Isaiah Wynn, or you have a guy Williams. like Williams. I'm sorry. Isaiah Wynn, he's completely, he's another guy. <laughs> um, you have, you have him, or you have, you know, someone that really emerges and you want to keep an extra guy. Maybe you do cut back on, you know, one of your, um, you know, linemen or you cut back on one of your special teamers or, you know, whatever you need corners, something you can cut back from to make an extra room for an extra receiver. But, um, I just, it's like, there's that like DPJ Antoine and Antoine green are both very similar in the fact that they have NFL bodies. They are intriguing they're young. The only thing DPJ has over Antoine Green, per se, because they're a pretty similar player, is that, you know, DPJ has that, like, NFL experience, and, and but he's still young enough to have that potential. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be very interesting. Um, I just I just don't – in my mind, I just don't love the idea of Kylie, Kylie Freeman being your number three receiver that is lining up on the outside. I just don't like that. I mean, gadget plays – Deep plays, end arounds, pitches, like how you how he was utilized last year, fine. But I want JMO to slip into what Josh Reynolds was, and I want Josh Reynolds to be replaced by an a, like a big body or big ish body X, which is either Antoine Green, DPJ, or one of the camp bodies that are anywhere from you know six two to six four. So. I think what you're missing about Clee Freeman is um, he had the high, he had the best yards per uh, yards reception, not really yards per reception, um, separation. So he's pretty good at separating from the pack. Um, would I put him in the slot? Yes. Would I put him on the outside? No. I think Jamison Williams and Sutton Brown will be on predominantly on the outside. I just feel like we need a, a guy with an X receiver body. Like I, I like. To me, that's Jamo, that's Amon Ra, and Khalif as your three, it's like there's not a lot of go get it contested. And, I mean, and that's and that's where your two people that you said that you're yeah. looking for is Green and Pablis Jones. They need to play, they need to show out in training camp. I think this is one of the this is one of the biggest X factors. And I, I give you credit because you you gave you gave it first, and obviously I was like I was in lockstep with you. But if Green or uh Pablis Jones can separate themselves from the other guys and who do you, you like got, more out of those two? Like just those two. I loved Antoine Green in college. I did. Um, but man, DPJ, like I've watched him in the pros. I thought he got a raw do- deal in Cleveland. Right. I know he had a shitty quarterback at Michigan, Shea Patterson, who was absolute dog shit. And any 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 uh any Michigan fan can uh, totally attest to this. Shea Patterson had Nico Collins and DPJ and still got nothing done. Imagine right. that. Um, I, he had a great year with Cleveland, and then he kind of fell off the map. I don't know why. I, I, it does. It's still shocking to me. But uh, I do like DPJ. So if he had to choose, I go DPJ over Green. But I do like Green too. I think Green could stay on the roster. The issue is you're you're at a roster crunch now. This is what I'm saying. Like, and I'm I made the case. I made the case um, with my guys uh, when we were talking about our. Are guys that uh, potentially could be, um, you know, X factors in preseason. Like, look at a guy like Traquan Smith. Like, that's a guy who Dan Campbell knows from New Orleans. He had some pretty productive seasons in New Orleans. Um, he could he's he's a bigger wide receiver, not like your stereotypical X wide receiver, but he could do what he could do. And then you got Maurice Alexander, who's a returner. So there's a lot of ways they can go with this. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure they can go many different ways. I, Isaiah Williams could make the roster too, so that's going to be interesting. It's just going to be interesting to see what happens with this wide receiver group. I think we're both in lockstep with there. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at, you know, Isaiah You know, Isaiah Williams, it's like, you know, 5'10", you know, it's like, you just don't want to run a bunch of 5'10", 5'11 guys out there and kind of, you know, I, like, seriously, I wish, like, I feel like DJ Chark was perfect for this offense if he could stay healthy and if he wasn't 
like, well, like I said, either A, made a glass, or B, thinking he could go get a, like, generational bag at Carolina, which he literally got, like, the same amount of money we offered him, whatever. Which was so stupid. It was so a stupid. Six, a 6'4", contested, fast, like, like, DJ Chark, the idea of DJ Chark or someone similar to that fits so perfect in this offense. It's, like, kind of why, Loki, I was hoping, um, you know, that, I mean, I loved it. I love that we got Terry and Arnold. I did not think we were going to have a chance at Terry and Arnold. That's why, like, a part of me was like, man, if we get to the, the, the low 20s or mid 20s and a guy like Brian Thomas is there as our true ex, like, yeah. I wasn't totally upset with it. Or, you know, Keon Coleman or someone that can, like, truly go up and Xavier get Xavier like that. Yeah. Someone like that. Something Diamond like that. Told, you know, so, like, I just think that, like, man, it's, it, it's kind of like the missing spot, but, um, you know, we got a couple guys that could potentially fill that role. And, and there's always a chance for the future. And I mean, the way Ben Johnson runs it, I mean, St. Laporte is kind of that big target anyways. I mean, yep. so. and you got to think about Jameer Gibbs is going to get more pass receptions this year. And honestly, like if we're being totally honest with each other, I think this wide receiver group really suits Jared Goff well, because the one thing that Jared Goff does do really, really well is he has good ball placement. And these are wide receivers that can really separate themselves from the pack. So if we're talking about you know how key this is, I mean, let's just, just look at that, and that's gonna be that's gonna be crucial. But that's it's gonna be interesting. To, what is there another one that you were you were looking at? Like I I personally, obviously we mentioned the edge opposite of Aiden Hutchinson. and we mentioned that before. Is there anyone else on the list that you're kind of like interested in watching? Um, not. I mean, obviously the inside that interior line. Um, with us going between. Last year of having um, a group of the Aquara brothers, Charles Harris, Levi Anzawerke, um, yeah. you know, I, I mean, that group stunk. So, like, the fact that, I mean, our defensive line group as a whole should have an opportunity to get better. I really think Matthew Betts um, from British Columbia um, is going to be, like, could be that random surprise X factor on the other edge, but it's just totally unknown. Like, I love the idea of it. It's a higher, it's a low risk, high reward. You know, I seen the tape on the guy, the guy flies in the backfield like a demon. He's athletic. He's strong. He's tall. He's fast. Like he, he, he has the traits, but uh, as we know, play, I mean, different leagues, there's nothing that can match up to the NFL, you know, so, yeah. so it'll be interesting to see, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. So 